Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded feedback event for the June 2015 examination for Unit 9, Interpreting and Using Engineering Information. Neil Watkins is the lead examiner for Unit 9, Interpreting and Using Engineering Information. To help you get the most out of this feedback, you may want to have the following documents handy, as we will refer to them during the session. Here are the aims and objectives of today's session. You will Receive feedback on performance of learners of the June 2015 examination series. Consider questions where significant numbers of learners underperformed and possible reasons why. Discuss the lead examiner's report. Consider delivery strategies and share good practice. Address common issues. Find out about further support available. Delegates should open the Unit Specification, Unit 9, Interpreting and Using Engineering Information. The Unit Overview provides the basis for the general content that the exam will cover. Note, the introduction mentions that having an ability to understand and use information is one of the most critical skills required in engineering. Example. Many learners enjoy the process of manufacturing products, but when presented with a range of information, do they know how to interpret this information with enough precision and accuracy to meet the product's needs? Learners need to understand this. When we look at the learning aims and content, we can see that the unit has a range of information that needs both interpreting and using to manufacture products. Some will be more straightforward than others, but all will have to be covered in the time allocated. Format and purpose of the assessment. One hour paper-based exam, worth 50 marks. The examination consisted of a variety of question types, including multiple choice, objective questions, short answer questions, and an extended writing opportunity at the end of the examination paper. Where learners are expected to explain for two marks, they get one mark for the identification and one mark for an expansion. Centres need to make sure that learners are fully prepared to sit the external assessment, entered for assessments at appropriate times, with due regard for reset opportunities as necessary. Sample assessment materials are available to help centres prepare learners for assessment. The pilot exam has also been published as extra practice material for learners. The previous series lead examiner reports, question papers, mark schemes and pre-recorded events are also available on the website for this unit. This is a GCSE equivalent Level 2 qualification and should be treated as such. It is not advisable for learners in Year 9 to sit the exam as they may not have enough knowledge or experience of the subject area. You can read the lead examiner's report which has been published. This question is a straightforward multiple choice. Learners need to enter two crosses for their chosen responses. Most learners achieved both marks. The correct responses being isometric and general assembly for 1A. This question is an example of line matching. 
learners need to draw a line from the mechanical component symbol to the most appropriate component name. Both mechanical component symbols need to be matched to a component name. Most learners were able to identify the nut, but there were many incorrect responses for the screw. Typically, learners thought this was a key or spring. The majority of learners were able to score reasonably well here, as many were clearly able to give simple reasons for the use of mechanical component symbols. Typical correct responses centred around the mark scheme responses of internationally recognised symbols and easily identifiable components. Learners who did not score well here often gave repetitive answers, centred around ease of identification and easy to understand. Many learners were able to correctly name the safety sign. The most common responses related to switch off machines, switch off here, and isolate. Often responses were not in this exact format, but suitable learner interpretation was accepted, as shown in both examples. A typical incorrect response that was commonly seen was emergency stop, which is from the safe condition category. Here we can compare responses from different learners. Learner A. Two marks were awarded for identifying each safe condition sign. Learner B. Zero marks, as there was no rewardable content. Learners often identified signs belonging to the mandatory category, such as wear safety boots and wear safety goggles. This is an example of a calculation question. Most learners were able to access both marks here by either showing correct calculations and a correct answer, learner A, or by just stating the final answer. Often learners who partially completed some calculations correctly but failed to get the final answer were awarded one mark, as shown with learner B. For A1, learners who scored well here were able to work out the overall length of the product by adding the 65mm length to the 20mm radius. Many learners gave complex incorrect calculations or simply did not attempt this question. For A2, some learners were able to recognise that C bore means counterbore on an engineering drawing. However, many learners failed to attempt this question. This question proved to be quite a challenge for all learners, and consequently learners did not score very well here, as they often gave responses that were already stated in the question stem, which related to finding the correct bend allowance, or finding the correct length of material. Also, many learners gave incorrect simplistic responses, such as easy to use and saves the engineer time, with no justification. This learner was awarded two marks for a linked response. Because it ensures the values are obtained quickly using the visual chart. One mark. Preventing the need to calculate the value each time. One mark. Full marks could not be awarded, as the learner did not provide a clear explanation for the second response, and there was repetition relating to calculations.
Question 4C. The majority of learners scored well on 4C, as they were able to identify the correct type of orthographic projection drawing as third angle. Some learners chose oblique, and although a type of drawing, it is not an orthographic projection and therefore incorrect. Question 5b. This again proved to be a challenging question for the majority of learners, as they focused on why production plans are required, rather than focusing on the necessity to write and keep new production plans for each specialist component, therefore attracting no marks. This learner was awarded one mark, with a link to keeping a new production plan from the question, by stating, if she is asked to make another specialist bracket. Here we can compare responses from different learners. Learner A. Two marks were awarded for two low responses, see where hidden details are, and it has dimensions, or reference to scale. Learner B. Three marks were awarded here for one low response. Detail of component can be displayed from three different angles. And a linked response. All the measurements can be displayed. One mark. Therefore not missing any information which the engineer will need to produce the component. One mark. Why did learners do well? Learners tended to perform well in the earlier multiple choice or short answer questions, as these tended to be easier, and learners could use common sense and some user experience. Most areas could be improved by teaching learners to answer the more demanding questions in greater depth by using linked responses relevant to the situation in each question. Some learners did not score full marks for this question, which was surprising, as this is quite a common safety sign that leads to a wide range of safety actions. This learner was awarded one mark for wear protective clothing, but take care simply didn't attract a mark. Other common responses that attracted marks included wear gloves, eye protection, avoid spillages, and dispose correctly. Some learners did not score well on this question, as many of the responses contained repetition, as with learner A on this slide. Learner B, zero marks, as there was no rewardable content. The learner is not focusing on the reason for using a manufacturer's manual. Acceptable responses could include Clear instructions are given To meet the product specification Full list of parts is provided Learners were asked to explain two advantages. This requires learners to provide two points of identification and to expand on each to provide the explanations. This proved to be a challenging question for the majority of learners. It was clear that some learners have used or seen control charts during their studies, but had limited knowledge of why they are required when manufacturing products. Where learners did score, it was usually in the form of a low response. Reason 1 here was not relevant to control charts and did not attract any marks. Reason 2 contained a linked response, shows fault in a washing machine, the technicians can refer back to it. One mark. And see who is responsible so the company can take action. One mark.
Learners were asked to explain two disadvantages. This requires learners to provide two points of identification, marked in red, and to expand on each to provide the explanations. The majority of learners scored at least two marks here, with typical responses centered around drawings becoming lost or filing cabinets required for storage but could not offer any further explanation to warrant the extension marks on this question. It was again clear that learners covered paper-based systems at some point during their studies, but there was a lack of understanding of the ways this information could be used in the context of the question. An additional response could have been the speed of access to drawings, one mark as each copy of the drawing will need to be located and signed in or out. One mark. It was pleasing to see that the majority of learners attempted this question with increased success, compared to previous series. The lower ability learners gave simplistic implications with regard to customers expecting quality control documentation, and difficult to spot defects, often in the form of a list, with mainly one viewpoint considered, as shown here. The more able learners were expected to achieve higher marks by providing a balanced range of implications associated with not generating quality control documentation with points made relevant to the situation in the question. Some answers were well thought out, and it was pleasing to see some learners suggesting both pros and cons in their final response. Nonetheless, most answers lacked the depth required for the higher marks. There are some valid points raised, but they are in a list form and unbalanced, allowing a mark of three to be awarded. To achieve the higher mark band, the answer would require a balanced and more detailed discussion, with perhaps a conclusion about the impact of not generating quality control documentation. Pause to consider the mark scheme for this question. Activity 1 Look at the example above. Using the mark scheme, decide what mark you think should be awarded and why. You may wish to pause the video whilst you carry out this activity. Answer to the activity. One mark awarded for understanding that they are universally known with reference to universally or internationally recognized in the mark scheme. One mark awarded for understanding that they are easy to see what they are and interpret with reference to components are easy to read, identify, understand, simpler to draw, in the mark scheme. This slide provides a summary of why some learners access less marks. Activity 2 Explain why the marks have and have not been awarded for this response. You may wish to pause the video whilst you carry out this activity.
answer to the activity. The first response has no rewardable content, as this is not a valid reason for using a bend allowance chart. The second response makes reference to bend consistency in the form of filing cabinets are all built to the same well-made standard. There is no second mark for this response as there is no linked explanation. Key message. Use linked responses to access the second mark for the explanation on each reason. This slide summarizes why some learners did well on this question. Activity 3 Look at the example above. Using the mark scheme, decide what mark you think should be awarded and why. You may wish to pause the video whilst you carry out this activity. Marks have been awarded here for identification of two reasons, with an extension to the first response to award the second mark. A total of three marks awarded for this response. This slide summarizes why some learners did well on this question. Activity 4 Look at the example above. Using the mark scheme, decide what mark you think should be awarded and why. Remember that this question uses a leveled mark scheme and the best fit principle should be used to determine the learner's level of ability and then provide a mark within that range. You may wish to pause the video whilst you carry out this activity. Overall, the learner has scored four marks. There are a number of points within the response that can be found in the mark scheme, but the key here is not to point mark but to look at a best fit principle within the leveled section in the mark scheme. The learner has described a few key points. No proof that the product has been quality checked, so can't be assured with product quality. Company could be faced with legal action leading to bad reputation and loss of sales, and producing documentation would put customers at ease. The response is still unbalanced, but reasonably coherent, and shows a good understanding of quality control documentation, just tipping into mark band 2, so four marks can be awarded. To achieve the higher mark band, it would need to be a little more balanced, with a conclusion included which justifies using or not using quality control documentation. This slide summarizes why some learners did well on this question.
Delegates should now read the lead examiner's report. This slide briefly summarises the need for such a report. Common issues surrounding this paper include not making enough use of the given scenario within answers. Answers should be contextualized. Generic answers, examples not being specific enough to the scenario in the question. Lack of understanding of technical vocabulary. Room for improvement of examination technique. With your team, you may wish to share views and suggestions on the delivery of the qualification and best practice. The above areas may be good starting points for a discussion and may make this part of the session a bit more focused. Please note that this part is dealing with the delivery of the qualification rather than the exam. Our Getting Ready to Teach events will also be useful in providing support and guidance with the delivery of this qualification as a whole, and these can be accessed by clicking the link to see our full training offer. For further support and feedback relating to this qualification, please visit our dedicated BTEC web pages.